Hi everyone! Today we're making ice cream. So London has been enjoying really beautiful weather recently. We actually had a heat wave over a week ago. I mean, it's currently gone somewhere, taking a break right now. So the temperature has dropped a little bit and I have no idea whether the heat wave is going to come back this year. But it doesn't matter because there's always summer in my heart. And it makes perfect sense that we made some ice cream. So this ice cream we're making today is probably one of the best keto vegan ice cream I ever tasted, if I may say so myself. And it's super easy to make. You don't need an um, ice cream machine. You don't even need a food processor. And if that sounds good, let me show you how to make it. So to make this gorgeous ice cream, we need some coconut cream. So you may be wondering whether you could use coconut milk. And the answer is yes, but I would recommend that you use coconut cream because you just get more cream out of it. Because we're going to skim off the liquid, so the more cream, the better, right? So we need two tins of coconut cream. And then sweeten of your choice, I'm using a risotto. And then we're going to add in some almond butter. So this is going to make our ice cream so fragrant and creamy. So I love almond butter as I'm using almond butter, but you can use any kind of nut butter you like. You can use cashew butter, peanut butter, any nut butter you like. And then some vanilla extract. And then so I've got a block of dark chocolate here. So this is 100% cacao dark chocolate. So you can use any kind of dark chocolate you like, but make sure there's no added sugar in that. And then I nearly forgot, we also need a little bit of zenaga, just a very small amount. So this is it. This is all you need for this beautiful, beautiful ice cream. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to get the coconut cream out. So it's a good idea to keep the tins in the fridge for a few hours or overnight because we're going to separate the cream from the coconut water. So it helps when it's chilled. So just scoop the cream out. It shouldn't be too hard to do. So just scoop the cream out and then leave out the coconut water. So the coconut water, you can add it to your smoothie or um, to your chia seed pudding. Not many people know this, but it's actually really good as a soup stock. So if you're making veggie soups, you can just add it as a base. And just do the same with the second tin. And I remember someone suggested in the comment section that you could chill the tin upside down. So when you open the tin, the cream stays on top. So that's a really good tip. So thank you for the tip. Lovely, so that's our coconut cream. And then our nut butter. So we need about 200 grams. So this jar is about 225 grams. So just under a jar. So you can add a bit more or less, it doesn't matter. And then a small pinch of salt. So this is going to accentuate the sweetness of the ice cream. And then we're going to transfer the bowl over the hob. Okay, so I've transferred the mixture to a, a pot here. So we're going to apply gentle heat to our mixture. So I'm going to turn the heat on. Okay, so you want low, low heat. We're not trying to cook the mixture. We're just trying to heat it through. And use a spatula just to help it dissolve and melt together. And then you have the option to boost it up with some coconut oil as well. So this is optional, particularly if you want your ice cream super creamy, you can boost it up with some coconut oil. So I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons here and then use a whisk and just mix everything together. If it feels like it's getting too warm, then turn the heat off for a while. So all we want to do is for everything to kind of melt together. So the trick with vegan ice cream is the fat content. If the water content is too high, your ice cream is going to be really hard and icy. So bringing the fat content up gives you that really creamy uh, dairy cream-like texture. And then I'm going to add in my sweetener. So the amount you need depends on the type of sweetener you use. You can taste the mixture and decide how much you need. And then we're going to sprinkle in some zenagam. So we only need about quarter of a teaspoon to half a teaspoon. And then just beat it with a whisk to incorporate more air in. So the function of a zenagam is to bind the water content and the cream together. Because as you freeze it, it has a tendency of separating. So zenagam helps to bind everything together. Okay, so look at this. The texture is so creamy and silky. And you can see the color is, um, is turning a bit paler because we're incorporating a lot of air in. So the whisking really helps. And with the heat off and allowing the mixture to cool off a little bit, we're going to add in our vanilla extract. So I'm going to just 
pour in a little dash. So if you're making ice cream for kids, for the little ones, then please ignore the next ingredient I'm going to add in my ice cream. But if you're making ice cream for grown-ups, which I consider myself as one of them, you can add in some liqueur. It's absolutely gorgeous with some liqueur in it. So I've got some bourbon whiskey. Uh, you can use brandy, rum, whatever you like. I'm going to add in a couple of tablespoons and give it a whisk. And what it does, it makes it taste like Bailey's. You know Bailey's, the liqueur? I used to love Bailey's. Okay, so our ice cream mixture is ready and we're going to allow it to cool and bring it back to room temperature. Okay, so my mixture is completely cooled off. Um, you can speed it up by placing it in the fridge and just make it a bit quicker. So now I'm going to transfer it to my freezer and chill it for an hour. You want to make sure it's tightly sealed. So you want to make sure there's no moisture going in because the moisture is going to form ice on our ice cream and we don't want that. Okay, so my ice cream mixture has been in the freezer for about 60 minutes and we're going to churn it. So we're going to just mix it up a little bit. So you can see the edges are starting to kind of turn into ice cream. It's lovely, so creamy. And then just scrape off the bits on the edge and incorporate it into the mixture itself and give it a good mix. Okay, so now I'm sending it back to the freezer for another 60 minutes and I'm going to churn it one more time. Okay, now I'm going to churn it one more time and then place it in my storage box. Now it's thickened up even more. The texture is so creamy and beautiful. And just give it a, a nice mix. Lovely. And now I'm going to transfer it to my storage container. And before I do that, I'm going to add in my chocolate. So basically I just chop off the whole block of chocolate here. The quantity is up to you. So I'm going to just add in my chocolate here. There you go. And then give it a nice mix. So lovely and thick, just beautiful. And now I'm going to transfer my lovely ice cream into my container. And then I'm going to just spread it in as much as I can. That's lovely. And then I'm going to sprinkle more chocolate on top. I mean, just can't have too much of it. Just give it a nice layer of these chocolate bits. It's lovely. Okay, so now it's ready to go into the fridge for proper freezing. And I'm going to cover it tight with a lid. That will make it airtight. And this is optional, but even better if you could put it in a plastic bag. Seal it properly like this. So what it is is preventing moisture from getting into the container and start forming ice crystals. It happens very often when the ice cream container is not properly sealed and you end up with ice on top of your ice cream and also makes the ice cream really hard. So this is going to the fridge for at least three or four hours before you eat it or you can just leave it till you're ready. Okay, so this is actually the next day. So I've left it overnight and I've taken it out of the fridge I removed the cover and uh, it's been sitting on the kitchen counter for about 20 minutes. So we'll try to take a scoop out. If it's still a little bit hard, we'll just leave it for another 10 minutes. No problem. So I've got my ice cream scoop on the side here and it's being warmed up with hot water in there. So let's have a go. So I'm going to just go in there. It's still on the firm side, but you don't want it to melt too much. That's lovely. Look. Let's put it in our bowl and let's take another scoop. Lovely. In it goes. Maybe I'll just take one more. Look at this. So lovely. Well, time to eat it. It's a little, little scoop. It's the consistency and the firmness is just beautiful. It's perfect. Mmm. So creamy. It does taste like Bailey's. It's so funny. There's no coffee in there, but it tastes like Bailey's. Mmm. Mmm. You can add a shot of strong espresso. It will make coffee ice cream. And I love coffee ice cream as well. So I hope you liked today's recipe and we'll give it a go. Give it a try. It's beautiful. And thanks for all of you 
that support the channel through buymeacoffee.com. It means the world to me. So follow me on Instagram if you haven't already and check out my Amazon shop. So thanks for hanging out with me today, or should I say two days? And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.